So forever after, society for thousands of years has called the very act of homosexuality sodomy. And the participants in this sodomites to teach us that in the eyes of God and the Bible, whether it's rape or willingly, homosexual activity is a death style. It's sodomy. It's sodomy, which remains destroyed until this very day, just to remind us. The sodomites want us, the religious leaders and religious followers, to forget this eternal lesson from God's eternal words. But I, for one, will never forget his timeless words. Homosexual activity remains sodomy for all time. It remains objectively wrong to those who promote it. They are evil just like those who promote adultery, pornography, incest, and underage sexual relations. It will always be wrong. And Sodom and Gomorrah remain destroyed until this very day. Please, I plead with you two more minutes. Now I'm going to tell you what we can really do about it. New Jersey has fallen very short. It's late in the game. You've given them, through your inaction, you have given them de facto homosexual marriage. Civil unions and domestic partnership is homosexual marriage. They just want to brainwash the kids now. That's all it's about. So what can we still do? Let me tell you. It's needless to say that despite two and a half decades of education of the homosexual community into the dangers of their lifestyle, studies show that many homosexuals have a hundred or hundreds of sexual partners over a lifetime, far more than heterosexuals. They are one and a half to three percent of the population, but they, according to the Los Angeles Times in the 1990s, commit 40 percent of child molestations. The proof is, it's not the women who are statutorily raping the young boys, and 40 percent of all molested children are boys. So who's doing it? One and a half to three percent. Even if you would give them their ten myth, 10% are less than 40% of the children boys, there is something perverted about that lifestyle. The heterosexuals don't have bathhouses, they don't solicit women in the restrooms, nor is their depression rate, their suicide rate as high or their lifespan as low as the homosexual community, so it's not so gay after all, is it now? Is it now? So why is their movement so powerful and you all, we all, the salt of the earth, who outnumber them tremendously, why are they winning and we're losing? I'll give you an example. I'll tell you why in one minute. How many people here were listening last week to Rush Limbaugh, who gave 2.2 million and he doubled that for a piece of paper that the senators wrote on? That's 4.4 4, 4 .4 million dollars. Listen to this now. A hundred thousand dollars times 42. That money, that money, 4.2 million dollars, it's great to send Marines who died their kids to, to college, I'm not saying. But we're all facing a terrible problem here. Imagine with that kind of money, if there wouldn't be egos involved, we could take $100,000 and run candidates against 42 of the lowlifes who made homosexual marriage and a whole heck of a lot of them would lose. And what do you think the politicians would do after that? So I want to ask you, I want to ask you a question. We can take back our country, but when was the last fundraiser to raise a couple of million dollars rush Catholic Church, rabbis, Muslims, black and white, evangelicals. We are one of the last fundraisers to raise $100,000 to do this job. Let me tell you something. In the Atlantic Monthly, look it up. The article is in March 20th, and I'm concluding now. But you've got to hear this. They have a story of a guy who raised $15 million to run 70 races across the country in 2006. 
and he boasted that 50 out of the 70 homosexualist candidates won. 50 out of 70. Because they put their money where their organs are, and we should be putting our money where our religious values are. Thank you very, very much. They're playing the music. That means my time is up, I guess. Thanks, and God bless. to pledge, a written pledge, not to vote for and to vote against any politician that votes for the homosexual agenda. Through our churches, through our synagogues, we would have a million pledges in New Jersey. I promise you the politicians would wake up. Let's stop talking about how bad it is. Let's get our money and our pledge cards out and we shall win for the glory of God. Thank you.